Sorry. And your question is wrong on another channel. I'm all wrong. In my opinion, right? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. What I'm saying is, these extremist groups, these terrorist groups, some of them are maniacs. The reason they're doing this is not because, oh, I don't like Britain. I don't like the summer. I don't like the well, hot I don't weather. Like either. I, I don't agree. like the hot, no, uh, like you know, either. the winter here, or the summer here, the rain here. Is this what you really oh, think? Well, yeah. These extremists, they are giving us this excuse. I'm sure you know what their justification of their terrorist activities are, right? They're not just simply saying, you know what, I don't like the British food because I don't like, ke I like kebabs rather than um, burgers. Fish and chips. Is that fish and chips? Is this, do you think this is what the excuse is? So, so instead of me telling you, okay, let's understand this. Why are these extremist groups doing these extremist activities? Yeah. Well, I, I think they truly hate what the Western group stands for. What of the West do they hate? Uh, the question should be who created them in the first place. We, we will establish this. You will, will come. What of the West do they hate? Just the infidelity and the sexual immorality and all the different things in the West that you see all the time. That is this what they say? No, that's what, that's, you ask me what I think. That's what, I what but I the think. answer is not really and sufficient in this context. They because want to bring. Yeah. Um, they want to bring caliphate or they want to bring. By killing um, people with their cars in, in, in Westminster? This is how you bring caliphate? Is that what they say? I think they want to bring. Now I need to understand I want this what, right what you understand of them. So you have now these people who hate the West and you're saying they don't like your immoralities. Is this the reason they're giving? Because you're immoral, the West is immoral, we want a caliphate in Westminster? Maybe. You tell Why do you say maybe? I would like to hear that you have gone through and say, look, I'm going to research this subject. I'm going to see what these people, these terrorists are saying, you know. For what, it, what it's worth. You haven't done that, have you? I'm asking you. No. Why do you ask me? That's the problem, number one. You're asking me, because do you think I am a supporter of ISIS? That you're asking me these questions, I'm going to give you the answer. You need to go and... you're not, but... No, you need to go and go to the media outlets or media stations of ISIS or any of the extremist groups and interact with them or find from the literature why they're doing this. You haven't done that. And this is representing of majority of the people in the West, okay. like yourself, because you haven't really understood why they're doing this. Have you heard of the word? Can on a more practical level, you also what sources you might consult. So I would recommend Al Jazeera, and not because it's the font of all knowledge, but it's better than Fox or CNN a lot. Uh, so Al Jazeera, but also lots of other sources as well. There's a, 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 a Islamic news site uh, based in London, I think, called Five Pillars. The, left, the number five plus pillar in letters. I'd recommend what well, that is another possible option. But the thing is to read widely and read different views rather than just go to one news source. And be, be informed. What, what, watch Fox. I mean, you know, but don't let that be your only source of news. I'm Balance it out. I do listen to Al Jazeera. Right. I get good. It over that hotel, hey, hey, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, watch Russian uh, Russia to. Uh, RT, RT, RT. I listen to RT, um, I listen to Skype, well, good. I try so, to listen so, to all of them. Get a balance or get a, diver, a, a diverse diet of news and then you'll be able to think, well actually I, I can yeah. understand this issue better now that I've, you know. So Given that's the kind example of, of the mayor recommend. of London, how but it's I, I been misquoted by the Iraq. Uh, I've not been to Iraq, but I understand that before Iraq was invaded uh, yeah. illegally, I think, by your government and my government, the US and British government, it had a government in Iraq, it had a health system, it had a modern education system. Yes, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein was a tyrant, I don't deny that. But now it's a basket case. Now there's been a civil war, there's been hundreds of thousands of people have been killed. It's, it's, a, it's a failed state. And out of that came something it didn't exist before, terrorism. Out, um, uh, out, um, uh, there were no terrorist groups in Iraq. Uh, uh, Saddam Hussein didn't exist there, Al-Qaeda wasn't there despite what your government said. And now we have, out of this chaos uh, uh, of, of a failed state, we have this Sunni terror organization that's arisen. So I partly lay the blame, actually, for ISIS 
indirectly, but still part of it, at the feet of Tony Blair, at the feet of George Bush, at the feet of the Americans. Do you agree? I don't yeah. disagree. So, so, so when you say, you, well, what are Muslims doing about is, terrorism? No, hang on, let me just finish. When you say, what are the Muslims doing about terrorism? I would say to, to you, as a, I'm fairly uh, representing everything, sure. um, you know, I would, I would say to you, what, why is your government creating the conditions by destroying societies, reducing them back to the Stone Age, barbarizing them and killing hundreds of thousands of uh, in a war that was uh, a lie. It, it was done for weapons of mass destruction, which everyone on the planet knows, apart from George Bush, doesn't exist. You know, it's based on a lie as well. We were sold a lie. It was a terrible catastrophe. It destroyed the country. And out of this has come the whirlwind. And we're surprised and shocked. And who gets the blame? Muslims. And there's his Excuse story. me. Excuse me. No way. So I think we need to look at this the social, economic, and political context of invasions, of, of decimations of society, of killings of hundreds of thousands of people as the historical political context for the rise of ISIS, rather than as some kind of abstract ideology that doesn't like a sexual immorality in the West. As if that's, that's not what ISIS is about. They actually, they actually serve a good function in their own eyes in protecting against Shia death squads. Uh, that, that, that's why people are in people in Mosul and other countries have actually welcomed ISIS to protect them from the Shias who, who uh, operate death squads that kill them as well. So there's kind of warfare going on there. So it's much more complicated uh, than what are you Muslims doing about terrorism? What are you Americans doing about not creating the conditions where terrorism comes out like a, an evil and, phoenix? And, and I, that was and, and essentially and my forgive point. Forgive me if that's the way my approach was. No, I'm not blaming I'm you not trying to say. I'm using you as a whipping boy. We've got a problem here. What are the Muslims doing about it? No, yeah. not by. I totally agree with the things you said, but I think that because you mentioned that, that Iraq had a, a very strong infrastructure. I think the goal was I totally agree. 2020 hindsight that it was wrong. We just plucked out Saddam Hussein from yeah. there. Everything will work good, and you will you have just good pressed a button, and then he's I, I, that's it. Then of Saddam Hussein. Things yeah. aren't that they didn't simple, do that. Right? They, they actually saw the entire did. Iraqi army yeah. was disbanded. Do you remember this? This is one of the problems. Yeah. It wasn't just yeah. one individual. They actually removed the upper echelon of the state. They removed the army and the high command. And do you know the backbone? I'm told of ISIS is Iraqi yes. officers. Yes. Iraqi officers of Saddam Hussein's that. army. Iraqi so, so they, 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 so there's a liberation there. So it wasn't just an individual; they actually removed and destabilized a whole society, and then which was caught up in chaos. And out of this was born multiple terrorist organizations. And there were, I mean, early on when America was occupying, a lot of these so-called terrorists were the people who were seeking to free their country from the occupiers. Who were the occupiers? The British and the Americans. And so they were, they were motivated by patriotic uh, instincts, arguably, rather than hatred for Western sexual immorality. They wanted them out of their country. It's the same with the Taliban in Afghanistan. All these people are motivated. They want they want the foreigners out of their country. And if we were Afghans, whose side would we be on? Would we just naturally go with Americans, or would we want the people of our country to rule our country? You brought up in your conversation, you brought up George Bush and you brought up Donald Trump. Yeah. Where does Obama fit in this? Well, he, do you think he was, he, he, he was, he was Bush. completely clean? No, no, he was, no, 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 no. he was Bush I mean, too. More drone he was son of Bush, son of Bush. Son of Bush. Oh, he was son of Bush, son of a Bush. No, he was son of a Bush. No, no, he was Bush Mark II. He continued the legacy. You remember, I think he was really, he expanded it. I think he was really well-intentioned. He wanted to close, he promised to close Guantanamo Bay. Uh, uh, you know, within days again. You know, eight years later, no, it's still open uh, at the very end of his presidency. He failed on his own. He was given the Nobel Peace Prize. Do you remember that? Before he got elected. He was elected. given the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> the day after he got elected, he got a Nobel Peace Prize yeah. for doing yeah. nothing. No, well, I, know. I know. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Well, he got it, the Nobel Peace Prize for not, for not being George he's, Bush. He's that's why that's he got it. That initially. the Republican stop him doing his work. Well, he... Well, 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 I'm not going to blame Gabe. Anyway, returning to your original question, why I said I felt that this was the wrong question. It's not what Muslims should do Muslims have already what should have we done all do as much what should as you all do I think the responsibility you have to take some responsibility with you <laughs> I in your hands with you. and say look and I agree the reason why as my brother have expounded anything, and explained and created huge division no, between but as, the as, as we have now realized the, the rise of these terrorist organizations yes. is, is partly and mainly to do with this political situation yes. the devastation created by 
our governments, yeah, of respected countries. So you should not allow this to happen. And exactly. since this is happening, you should, you know, stop invading Muslim countries. Be a great I'll start for tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> That's my frustration. Is yeah, like, well, I'm just as don't take this personally. You're just, as you're just a guru. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. I'm not blaming you personally. The solution, I think, you. they we should, should stop invading Muslim countries. Islam terrorists, that generates or, blowback. Jihad, all of that. So all this quotation they have to take care of. Call them terrorists. Call them criminal. Call them whatever you like. At least. Okay. Just take you're get off the word of Islam and Muslims these countries. and all of that. If you invade countries and abuse someone's going to take out and, blow, and, and the blow up something here. It, it's, it's cause and effect is common sense. Yeah. Someone's so, going to get pissed off and, and come back here. So we understood. things I've heard we understood. Trump, though, is he doesn't... Yeah. I know he said that. But he said, it's no, interesting, I, I though, the way how this conversation became... In the of Obama. <laughs> I, I agree. No, I, he's Did you notice one thing? I agree. It's interesting how this conversation becomes a political conversation. But... Out of this, we learned something, right, yes, in this did. discussion. No, but can I come back to you? Said you were a Jew. No, 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 no. I did not say. What did you say? Was a Jew? Oh, no, you didn't say you were a Jew no, because I'm a Christian. you're a Christian. I'm a Christian. Okay. So, as a Christian, yes. what's stopping you from accepting Prophet Muhammad? What's stopping? Well, because of, because of who I believe Jesus Christ is. That's what our whole conversation was. Yeah. I truly believe that Jesus Christ <laughs> is is God first. Is this what he I taught? I believe in one God. I believe that, that, that I believe in the Trinity. I know it's hard to explain. It's kind of like why is it hard to explain? Because it's it's the mystery of God. It's are you I mean, saying God communicated something about Him yeah. that shouldn't I have been communicated? Relationship with Jesus Christ. May I, may I just I totally believe? That may I just try to understand something? Yes. You see, when the Creator communicates with the creation, it's for a reason, right? For a reason. There are many things about the Creator that we will never comprehend with our finite mind. Like the Trinity. Let's mm. so understand this. Many things. Because God is infinitely greater than us. Right? As a finite human being, yes. we would not fully comprehend who God is. Like the so, so if, okay, I will say why you can't bring the example of like the Trinity just now. You see, if God wants to... The closest example I could come with is, you know... Before you give me an example, I want H2O to understand... H2O is... can be in water, ice, or steam. It's all still H2O, but two, three totally separate entities. Ice is hard, gas, water, still H2O. Okay. One I, H2O. I, I don't want you to commit any blasphemy making images of God in earth or in heaven, right? He this is something that's... He knows... He knows but isn't that that's for, he forbidden? Knows what I'm trying to Isn't that forbidden? What's that? You shouldn't make any graven images or any kind about God. So you are comparing God is like this, creating an image of God which is not what God... God is God the way he describes himself. Has he described it that way? <laughs> Through his word. No, no. There is nothing in his words yes. that God described himself like water, ice, or steam, oh, is has it? He? No, of course not. Right. So you should describe God. Don't you think it's safe to describe God as God has described himself? Uh, that's what I'm trying to do, but right. you won't accept that. You're, no, you're no, 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 no. A, a you have, you have, example, you have like, given me an example which God hasn't described in your scripture. Yes. What I'm saying is very simple to understand. God communicates to us because he wants to communicate about something about himself, about this reality or the reality to come after, right? right? Do you think God is a good communicator? Right. So whatever God communicates, we can understand. So would God communicate anything that is not anyone can understand? So that no one can understand? The word is faith. No, I think you no, this is not why I'm asking. No, but, no, but about the communication. God did not put something in the Bible and say, one, two, three, X, Y, Z, there you go. Because there's some mystery to it. You see, he wants us to, to study it. He wants us to study the Old Testament, the New Testament, and how Jesus is revealed in the New Testament from the writings of the Old Testament. But I think you've missed my point with due respect. It's faith. Do respect with my point. If God is going to communicate, He's going to make it in a way that we will understand. Yep. If no one understands, then there was no purpose of communicating. For, let me give you an example. I'm going to communicate to you about something about something, right? Yep. Uh, I agree. I agree. Good point. Okay. Tell me what I've communicated to you. Have I been successful in communicating what I wanted to communicate to you? Yes. Yes, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if 
I tried communicate it to you and you understood nothing. It's a failure in communication. Think about how Jesus please, 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 spoke to wait. so many people. He spoke in parables. No, no, right? different. He did. He wasn't no, no, no. clear. He didn't say one, two, three. He gave pictures. He told stories. That's we will talk about the. He also said he had a god as well just to touch sorry he also said he had a god in john's gospel he says i'm returning to your father my father your god and my god so jesus had a god therefore he was not god if there's one god you don't have to believe it i do no no i'm just reporting to you what jesus you're asking, said your question was no, the reason the reason why i say the mystery card okay. because i truly believe who okay. jesus christ is but the reason why i say the mystery card here it's not really something that we should use or play. It's because when we go before the time of Jesus Christ, what did there was the no time before the Jesus Christ? While he was on earth. Oh, while he was on earth. Right. So there were prophets and messengers raised by God to convey the message of God to mankind. Right. God Himself raised prophets and messengers. Did He tell to any of those prophets and messengers, "I am a Trinity," that I am three in one? Or rather, he said, I am God and there is none else. Before me, there is no God form. After me, there is no God. I alone am God and there is none else. What did he say? Which one? Okay, so let me just, because we're debating over the Trinity, right? So where does, if we have God the Father, where does the Holy Spirit come? What is the Holy Spirit? Let's, let's go one step at a time because instead of engaging with the subject at hand you want to I no no, no. debate about Jesus, we're not we're not debating we're just, just simply say saying if we find before Jesus the man the prophet peace be upon him who was walking on this earth and conveying the message of God to the people there are a series of prophets and messengers beforehand if they are indeed from God and God communicated to them about Himself. They all said and exactly what if, would happen. They okay. said exactly did what they, would happen to Did they ever Easy. tell the people, God is a Trinity? Did they tell the people, like for example, Abraham and Moses? Did they say, peace be upon these prophets, that God is a Trinity? No. No, they didn't say If God was a Trinity, you'd expect them to say that, right? Not necessarily. Okay. If because God, I don't, I think okay. It, if God is one, comes okay. In. If God is one, do you expect God to convey that message that He's one? You said earlier how we don't understand. No, my friend, please, God. please. Just one point to understand. If God is one, yes. rather than three hundred sixty million, yes. would you expect God to convey this message that I am one? Yes, He, he says. Would you expect that God to convey that to you? Or have no other God than me. Yes. So if clear. God is one, he should tell you that he's one. Yes? If God is two, do you expect that he should tell you that God is two? I don't think he's two. I no, 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 no. I, I if, believe in if, one God. If he was two. Three persons, one God. Let's try to understand. If God was two, if he yes. were two gods, yes. you would expect God to convey to you that we are two gods. Right? Right. right. If God is a trinity, you would expect likewise God to convey to you that I am a trinity. I think it's all through the Bible. Now, which prophet said God is a trinity? Yeah, so you have no, Isaiah, you have Jeremiah, you have no, Micah, nobody, nobody you, have, no, you have a whole, no. you have dozens and dozens this, of prophets. This is what you, you have expect. to take the entire Bible in no, context. Take the whole of the Old Testament, yes. the Tanakh, yes. the Torah, the Nabiim, the Kitubin, the, the, the Torah, the prophets, and the books, right? Writings. Take all of them. Which of the prophets told their respective people that God is a trinity? None. Or, did you, or maybe you know. None, where, right? None. Where, did you say none? Where was it? No, you would expect every single one of them to say God is a trinity if he was a trinity. I may expect it. No, 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 no. God and how he wants to communicate to his people and how he wants to show and reveal his son. You agreed so earlier on. If God is one. It was so easy. Okay. Then every, Do you then also believe, accept right? that God, if He expect, expects us to worship Him, He should tell us plainly that you should worship me? Do you expect that? He does tell us. Right. To, to so if you look in the Old Testament, does God anywhere in the Old Testament mentions that you should worship me? All through it. Yeah. All through that it. should worship Him, yes. All through it. This is what we expect, right? Right. Right. Do you believe Jesus is God expecting our worship? Yes. Can you find a verse 
even one throughout the whole of the entire New Testament where Jesus makes it clear that you should worship me? My special Muslim Bible. You wouldn't find any. You would not find any. I'm not just making this claim. It's a fact of reality. Can, can, can I just make a footnote to that? Jesus was asked in Mark's Gospel, what is the greatest commandment? And he repeat, repeated the Shema. This is the three times a day creed, if you like, that Jews recite even today.